But Julia Lee, I'll start with you. Um, another pretty solid day, but certainly, you know, the numbers nothing like what we saw on Wall Street overnight. Do you think it's just a case of, you know, Australian investors uh, maybe a little bit fatigued, a little bit cautious now? Understandably cautious given that we've seen five straight days of gains on the Australian share market and in the last five sessions the Australian market has managed a huge bounce of 9.2%. So this move up has been quite aggressive and strong so I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of consolidation at this stage. But it was another positive day for the Australian market up by 0.6%. Defensives generally underperforming. Once again risk was being bought so we did see most sectors trading high. The only exceptions today were the consumer staple and the property space. It was interesting in the banking sector as well. Uh, we saw a report in the Australian saying the Commonwealth Bank planning to cut costs, planning to cut its cost to income ratio from about 38% now down to 35% by 2013. And we also heard from ANZ freezing executive pay. So it does look like the bank's starting to focus in on cost cutting. And I think this is going to be a feature of the next 12 months as we do see some of those uh, traditional revenue streams uh, see, I guess, slow in growth. So the bank's very much in focus but still a positive performance up by 0.7 to 1.2 percent today. So altogether a fantastic day by the Australian market. Tonight in the U.S. is going to be interesting because we do see earnings season kick off and Alcoa will be the first one off the boat. The market's going to be very closely watching that because it is seen as a bellwether of the global economy. Yeah, well, you know, a few raised eyebrows um, around today in the Australian market, um, you know, about this planned plan that there's, there's this huge rebound um, in, in the US, or not even a rebound, further gains in the US and, and Europe on, um, on really nothing concrete. The market is hoping that France and Germany will be able to come to a deal by the end of the month and that's what it has been indicated but as you mentioned not really any concrete details. I guess there's two details which they have agreed to. First of all is they have committed to the recapitalization of European banks and secondly they are trying to come up with a long-term solution for Greece and Greece is expected to stay in the Eurozone. So the market expecting to see some sort of plan but over the next two weeks there's two very important important meetings going on. First of all we see the G20 finance ministers meeting and then next week we see the European Union leaders meeting. So we're hoping to see more positive headlines coming out of these two meetings and working towards some plan by the end of the month to help that European debt situation and that's really what the market is running on at the moment. Tonight's going to be important because there is a risk that Slovakia may not vote in favour of the European Financial Stability Facility so the market's going to be watching that one closely. Mostly. And of course, earnings season in the US. It, there's so much pessimism around earnings at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a significant upside from this earnings season. If we have a look at Alcoa, yes, aluminium prices were down 20% in the last quarter. But we have seen six downgrades come through for the first third quarter earnings and five come through for the fourth quarter earnings. So it could be that analysts are too pessimistic going into this earnings season and we could see uh, better than expected earnings results coming through it helping to support the market. So the people in the in the manufacturing and the export sector have been um, hit hard by the strength of the Aussie dollar and then you know you, you get this period where things look to be uh, picking up a little bit and it comes out on the same day that the Aussie goes back to parity. It is a double-edged sword. We did see lower commodity prices and a lower Aussie dollar and that's helped areas like manufacturing. The lower Aussie dollar means that they're mo more competitive overseas and the lower commodity prices means their input costs are no longer going any higher. But then the flip side is that it, the Aussie dollar is often seen as a measure of confidence in the market um, and confidence in risk assets. So unfortunately a fall in the Aussie dollar really means negative for usually the share prices of these companies involved. So in this uh, business survey we did see business conditions and business confidence once again improving. I remember in August both of these readings were negative. We actually saw business conditions turn into a positive to read so that was that was good to see but altogether that lower, lower Aussie dollar really good news for exporters and that means the mining sector, the manufacturing sector, the agricultural sector but if we have a look at the Aussie dollar today uh, it was another risk on day and that means the Aussie dollar back above parity a number of times. I've just drawn a line at that one dollar mark and you can see three times during the day we hit above parity.